Hi guys, welcome to Code Bashers. Guys, in this video, I will be discussing the advanced coding questions that were asked in the TCS exam. These questions were asked in on TCS exam that happened on 24th August 2022. So guys, make sure that you watch this video till the end and do not skip any part of the video because these questions are very important and they will tell you that what are the type of the question and what are the level of the questions which are getting asked in the TCS NQT exam. Okay, guys. Previously, also I have uploaded four. Four coding questions video for the ongoing hiring. So you can see here that I have discussed the question that were asked on 18th August, 19th August, 20th August. So I have discussed the different type of questions that were asked on various days. So make sure that you watch these videos also. There is, I have made a separate playlist only here. You can see this is NQT Advanced Coding Questions 2023 batch. I will give you the link of this playlist in the i button as well as in the description box. Make sure to visit it and watch these videos so that you can get to know. That how you have to prepare and what are the kind of the questions which are getting asked, guys. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe it. I get I get uh, really motivated when you guys subscribe for my channel. That's why I make such videos. Okay, and guys, Accenture hiring is also going on. So if you are giving the if you are taking part in Accenture hiring also, so there also I have discussed many many coding questions which have been asked in uh, ongoing hiring as well as in the previous hiring. So make sure that you watch. Uh, this playlist also the link again you will find in the description box as well as in the i button. So guys, now let's start this video. And before starting the video, you know what to do. Please hit the like button. Okay, so guys, first of all, we will be discussing the question in this video. Then we will be discussing the approach of this question, and then in the later part of the video, we will be discussing that how you will have to write the code in the exam. Okay. So the question here is: Jack and Jill are playing a string game. Jack has given Jill two strings, that is A and B. So Jack has given uh, Jill two strings that is A and B. Okay, Jill has to derive string C from A. So she has to derive the third string from first two strings that is A and B. How does she has to, how she has to derive? She has to derive C, A, uh, C string from A by deleting elements from string A such that string C does not contain any any elements from string B. Okay, Jill needs to uh, Jill needs your help to do this task. She wants you to write a program for this same. Given string A and B as input, derive the string C. So what? Let us see what the examples are. See, but we are given we are given two strings that is string A and string B. We are given. Okay. Now we have to derive a string C. How we will derive string C? Okay. What we'll do? We'll take string A and remove all the characters from string A which are no which are present in string B. So we have string A as tiger. So we will take the string A and we will remove all the characters from A which are which are present in B. Okay. So here's a, a, a string A is tiger and string B is T I. So we will remove the all the characters which are present in string B. We will remove them from string A. So what will be our remaining string? Our remaining string will be G E R because T and I, T and I are present in B. So therefore our remaining characters are G E R. So our string C will be G E R and this will be a simple output. Okay. Now next what we will do? Now next uh, let's just see next input. A string A is processed and B is again E S D. Now we have to derive string C. How we will derive it? Derive it? We will take string B. We will take string A and we will remove all the characters from it which are present in string B. So here E S and D are present in string B. So uh, this C string cannot contain E S D. Okay. So what will be our answer? It will be P R O C because E S E D. So these are containing contained in string B. So therefore. Our C will contain only P R O C. So I hope now the question is clear to you. You have to simply delete the letters which are contained in B, contained in B from A, and then you have to return the output. Okay. So it is a very simple question. So how we will do it? Let us just say uh, take first example only. That is tiger. Let us just see the approach now. Tiger will be string A and T I will be string B. What we will do? We will simply uh, we will simply maintain a hash map. What is a hash map? Hash map uh, stores key value pairs. So our key will be Our key will be the character, and our value will be the whether it is present or not. So what we'll do? We will traverse over the string B. We will traverse over the string B, and we, for every character we will present in string B, we will add it in. We will add it in our hash map. So now we are traversing string B. That is first we have derived T. So what we'll do? We will enter T here in the hash map, and uh, value will become true here. Value will become true here. That yes, T is present inside B. So therefore. T value is true. Okay. Next, next is I I L I alphabet I letter. So I will uh, insert in hash map. I will be inserted as key, and again value will be true that it is present. Okay. 
Now what we'll do? Now we have entered all the characters which are present in string B in our hash map. Now what we'll do? We will traverse our we will traverse our string A. We will traverse a string A that is sorry that is tiger. So first letter will come as T. First letter while traversing is coming as T. So we will check whether it is T whether it is T is present in this hash map. So if it is yes, then but we'll do first of all C. We have to make a new string that is C. Initially that will be empty. Okay, C initially will be empty. Now what we'll do? We will we are traversing this tiger string. Now T is coming here. Now we will check whether this T is present in the hash map. If yes, it means that that T will be present in the B string. Okay, so yes, T is present in the hash map. So we will ignore this T and we'll move ahead. So now moving to the next letter, it is I. It is I. Now we'll check whether this I is present in the hash map. So if yes, we will ignore that character and we will move ahead. Now next character is G. So G, you can say that is G present in the hash map. So answer is no. G is not present. So therefore we will add that G into a new string. That is C. In our C is a new string. Next letter is E. Whether E is present in the hash map. So answer is no. It is not present. So therefore we will add that character inside the C string. Next letter is R. Is R present in the hash map? So no. Answer is no. That no, it is not present in the hash map. That means we can add that alphabet inside our C string. So our final answer will be G E R. That that is our output only. So now you now I hope that uh, the approach is clear to you. So guys, if you have not liked the video till now, please like it. And if you have not subscribed this channel till now, please subscribe it. So now let's just see the code of this particular question. Okay. So guys, for saving the time, I have already already written the code. So let's just read the code line by line so that you can understand this. Okay. So first of all, we are we are taking string as our input. That is A R B that are given to us as an input. We are taking it. Okay. Next, we are uh, declaring in hash map where I have told you it is a key value pair. Key will be of character and uh, value will be of boolean whether it is present true or false. Okay. Name of the hash map is M P. <clears throat> okay. Next, what we are doing? We are placing all the values of the B string, all the characters of B string in the hash map. As I have told you. We will placing all the characters of B string in this hash map. So here you can see that while we are looping over the values of B string and we are entering each of the value inside this hash map. Okay, M P of B I equivalent to true. So we are putting like this. Okay. So after this loop is over, all the characters that are contained in the B string are present in the hash map here. Okay. Now what we are doing? We are declaring a new string that is C string that is empty initially. Now what we will be doing? I have told you that we will be traversing our A string. We will be traversing our A string, and whenever we encounter a character, whenever we encounter a character that is present in the hash map, then we will ignore that character. Otherwise, what we'll do? Otherwise, we will include that character in the C string. Okay. Again, I'm telling you, we will not traverse the A string character by character. At every character, we will we will check if that character is present in the hash map or not. If it is present in the hash map, then we will ignore it. If it is not present in the hash map, we will simply add that character in our C string. So. This particular loop is doing the same thing. First of all, we are traversing over the A string. We are traversing over the A string. We are checking whether that character is present in the whether that character is present in the hash map or not. If it is not present, if it is not present, if it is not present, then only we will be adding that character inside our C string. Otherwise, we will be ignoring it. Again, I am telling you, if the current character is not present in the hash map, then only we will be adding that character inside our C string. Otherwise, we will be ignoring that character, and after this loop is over, we will simply see out our C string. Okay, so this was the entire code. I hope it is clear to you. Let's just see some test cases. First one is tiger and ti here. Okay, let's just run it. Our answer should be G E R. Okay, our answer should be G E R. Okay, so here you can see that our output is G E R. Let's just suppose now we take it. Uh, first one is tiger. B string is T I G E. Okay, T I G. So our output should be only R, only single R. Okay, so you can see that our output is only single R. Now let's just see if both strings are same only. If both the strings are same, then our output should be empty string. Then there should be our empty string. That will that means nothing should be printed on console. Okay, so you can see that nothing is printed on the console. So this is the correct answer. Okay, so I hope now the entire question as well as the approach of this question was clear to you. And again, I'm telling you that. I, Accenture hiring and TCS hirings are going on. If you want to know that what type of coding questions are getting asked in those hirings, kindly visit my uh, channel. Both the playlist of TCS and the advanced coding questions, as well as Accenture coding questions that were asked actually in the exams, have been uh, answered here. 
so make sure to visit them all the links you will find in the description box and guys do hit the like and subscribe button and do share this video among your friends thank you for watching this video